as I re- read your story, and again, I'm more fascinated in the story before you start pinning on stars, uh, but we'll get there. Um, talk a little bit about how the time on the grandparents' farm be- was really formative for you. It, it was it was 100% formative for me for because I having you know growing up in Southeast DC. I, I didn't consider it fortunate at the time because, you know, my grandfather, uh, who lived in southern, southwestern Virginia, not far from Appomattox, had a tobacco farm. So as you can imagine, a kid growing up in southeast D.C., you know, the thought of being on a farm working tobacco fields, you know, in the middle of summer it was not exactly, you know, something I wanted to do. Uh, but in hindsight, uh, it ended up being uh, very formative for me and very instructive and taught me lessons uh, that, that I, that I lean on today. Uh, again, it was in the South. Uh, it, it, you know, they were out there in the middle of nowhere. Uh, my father, my grandfather was a, 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 a deacon in the church. Uh, and so he, you know, he and I, and my cousin who was there, uh, essentially worked tobacco, uh, every day, uh, other than Sunday when we went to church for most of the day. Um, but a particular story that was, uh, really instructive for me was, uh, one summer I was, I was on his farm. Uh, and, and again, uh, those of you who haven't experienced a farm, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I want to paint this picture for you because you, we're literally there on 60, 65 acres, really by, on our own. No one else is around. We very seldom leave the farm. Everything that we subsist with pretty much is, 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 is on the farm. So we didn't go for visits. We didn't, you know, go to the movies. We didn't go to the store. We didn't really go anywhere other than church on Sunday. Uh, And so uh, in our typical routine was to get up every morning. I had chores. I would feed the hogs. I would, you know, uh, do certain things. And then we would head out to one of the many tobacco fields. And this one particular summer, my cousin, who generally would be there with me, was with his mother in Philadelphia. So he would join us about two weeks later. So it was just my grandfather and I, he was pretty much an introvert. I was as well. So we didn't talk a lot, but he decided, you know, this particular summer that he would mentor me, I guess, for lack of a better term. And and he taught me these nuggets of wisdom that uh, at least nuggets of wisdom in his mind, uh, not necessarily in mine, mine, my mind, as an example, he, he, he taught me the difference between a mule and a donkey why I needed to know that uh, is beyond me, but he thought I did. Uh, he also told me that uh, a bl- even a blind rooster finds a kernel of corn every once in a while. And frankly, I'm still scratching my head over that one as well. <laughs> uh, but so this one particular day, we jump on the tractor, which was our routine. I mean, our typical routine was we would jump on the tractor and head out to a field. This particular day, we didn't do that. He went and got the horse. He had one horse and one cow. And he got the horse, hooked up a platform to it, put a plow on the platform. We went out to one of the fields, uh, and he hooked the plow up to this horse and started plowing these perfect rows up and down because they were going to plant vegetables later. And, and as a you know, 11, 12-year-old kid, I was fascinated by this. I've never seen anybody operate a plow before. Um, and so I was sitting on the ground kind of playing in the dirt My and you know, keeping keep in mind my grandfather and I have probably talked now more than we had since I was born. Uh, and so he took a potty break, went off into the woods, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I can impress my grandfather if I get behind this horse and continue his work so that when he comes back, you know, he won't have as much to do. <laughs> so I strapped myself in behind this horse, had never done this before. Uh, again, if you, those of you who haven't seen a plow, it's a big, heavy piece of equipment. I barely got it upright, uh, and I knew the command to make the horse go forward. And so the, I gave the command. The horse starts to walk, and so I'm kind of walking, trotting behind the horse. The problem is I didn't know how to operate the plow. Uh, that's problem number one. Problem number two, I didn't know the command to make the horse stop. I uh, didn't think about that until after I got into it. Um, so now the horse is going di- directly across my grandfather's perfectly plowed roads. Um, and, and I'm, one, scared, uh, don't know what to do, don't know how to make the horse stop. And let me pause just for a second. 
because I want to be clear. I don't advocate this, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that folks should do this. Times have changed. But back then, uh, in the 60s, on a farm by yourself with no one else around, you could whip your kids. And, and, and in fact, not only could you whip your kids, but if the neighbors found out about it, they would encourage it. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm saying, and he, and, and he had never done that to me before, but that's going through my mind as I'm messing up his morning's work. And so the horse is moving. I'm trying, run, trotting to keep up. My grandfather emerges from the woods and is in shock. He yells at me and he says, Larry, what are you doing? And I turn around. And if you can picture this in your mind, I'm sort of half turned looking at him, looking back at him, but trying to continue to move sideways because the horse didn't stop. And as I stumbled and almost fell, instinctively, I yelled out, whoa, you know, just trying to steady myself. And, of course, the horse stopped because that was the that command. Was the command. Yeah. Exactly. I didn't know that. <laughs> and so, that, so I was glad the horse stopped. But as I turned around, now my grandfather storming toward me, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, here we go. By the way, the, the tool of choice uh, on the farm to discipline your kids was called a switch, uh, which essentially is a, a, a tree branch. And we're out there in the middle of nowhere with hundreds of tree branches in, in, in arm's reach. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, I, I'm going to get it now. And so he storms up to me, and the first thing he says was, are you okay, which I wasn't expecting. And I said, you know, yes, uh, and I was about to apologize and say, hey, I, I'm sorry, I, I was just trying to help. And he stopped me, and he said something to me that was very, maybe considered inarticulate, um, but, but was very impactful. He said to me, uh, it's okay to try and fail, but it's not okay not to try. Wow. And what he, wow, what, right? what he meant by that yeah. was, hey, I'm, I'm your grandfather. I'm proud that you tried. And by the way, you know, in your life, you, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities out there. You can't be afraid to try, and you can't be afraid when you fail because, by the way, you are going to fail. But, the, but what I learned from that lesson was no matter how hard it seems, and, and, and how scared you are, go out there and try anyway. No. Uh, and that, that lesson has led me my entire life. It, it still leads me today. No, I think these are the sorts of things that people, like, again, kind of forget. It's common wisdom. Once you say it out loud, you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But sometimes right. in the moment, you don't live it. Listen to this full episode and more on the Apple Podcast app, Blog Talk Radio, Google Podcasts, or iHeartRadio. And now streaming on Amazon Music, Audible, and Spotify.